Beatrice Thompson, an elderly matriarch of a wealthy family, passed away on a rainy autumn night, leaving a vast void in the lives of her loved ones and the Charleston, South Carolina, community. The rain fell incessantly, as if the sky itself mourned the loss of such a notable woman. Beatrice, known for her strength and determination, was 82 years old, and her life story inspired everyone around her. Beatrice raised her first son, Lucas, as a single mother. Lucas was the result of a relationship that didn't work out, but Beatrice never let it get her down. She worked tirelessly to ensure that Lucas had a dignified life, facing society's judgmental stares with her head held high. Years later, she met Robert Thompson, a successful businessman, who fell in love with her courage and resilience. They married and had two more children, Peter and Sophia. The relationship between Robert and Beatrice was long-lasting, however. Robert passed away in a car accident. The family's life continued. Lucas left home and pursued his dreams, but Peter and Sophia always lived around Beatrice, enjoying a life of luxury. The years passed, and on a rainy day, the news of Beatrice's death quickly spread throughout the town, causing a mix of sadness and curiosity. Everyone knew about her enormous fortune and speculated about the fate of this wealth. Beatrice was a respected and admired figure, not just for her fortune, but also for her philanthropic contributions and her indomitable spirit. The morning after her death, the family's lawyer, Mr. Armstrong, began organizing the preparations for reading the will. Beatrice, always cautious, had left detailed instructions for her children to be summoned to a meeting at her majestic mansion, a historic property that reflected the grandeur of her life. Lucas, now a 45-year-old man, received the news with sadness. He always had a special relationship with his mother, who taught him to value simplicity and honesty. She was a warrior to the end, said Lucas, his voice choked up while on a call with Mr. Armstrong, as he looked at an old photo of Beatrice holding him in her arms. Peter and Sophia, on the other hand, upon receiving the news of their mother's death, were more concerned about the inheritance. What did she leave for us, asked Sophia, with a glint of ambition in her eyes. Peter, agreeing, replied, I hope she was fair. We deserve our part. The Thompson Mansion with its imposing columns and well-kept gardens, looked even more solemn on that, on that rainy day. Beatrice's children, Lucas, Peter, and Sophia, arrived at Thompson Mansion at different times, each carrying their own distinct emotional baggage. The imposing property, with its white columns and lush gardens, seemed even more solemn under the cloudy sky that day. The light rain added a melancholic touch to the scene, reflecting the air's mood. Lucas, the eldest son, was the first to arrive. He parked his modest car at the mansion's entrance and took a deep breath before getting out. Lucas had always been different from his younger siblings. While Peter and Sophia incessantly sought the glimmer and glamour that wealth could provide, Lucas valued simplicity and dedicated his life to social causes. He looked at the mansion with a mix of nostalgia and sadness. Mom, I hope you found peace, he murmured to himself as he walked towards the entrance. Shortly after, Peter arrived in his sports car, its engine roaring loudly as if to announce his presence. He stepped out of the car with an air of impatience, adjusting the expensive suit he wore. I hope this doesn't take long, he said, glancing at his wristwatch. I have an important meeting later. Peter had always been obsessed with wealth and status, and the idea of wasting time deeply irritated him. Sophia arrived soon after in an equally luxurious car. She stepped out of the vehicle with elegance, but her eyes revealed a cold ambition. Peter, do you think mom left something significant for us, she asked as she approached her brother. Peter shrugged. I hope so. After all, we deserve it. Inside the mansion, the tension was palpable. Lucas, already seated in the living room, watched his siblings with a serene but attentive gaze. He knew this meeting wouldn't be easy. Peter and Sophia had always rejected him, considering him an outsider in the family. Lucas said Peter, with a voice that mixed disdain and formality, I see you arrived early, eager to find out what you're going to get. Lucas remained calm. I'm here to honor our mother's memory, he replied firmly. Whatever she decided, I will accept. Sophia, with a sarcastic smile, added, Always the good Samaritan, aren't you, Lucas? Let's see if your goodness takes you anywhere today. Mr. Armstrong, the family lawyer, entered the room, 
interrupting the exchange of barbs. Good morning, everyone. I know this is a difficult time, but we need to follow your mother's instructions, he said. Please take a seat. We'll start reading the will. The siblings settled into the leather sofas, each with their own expectations and emotions. The house, filled with memories, seemed to breathe along with them, bringing old resentments and rivalries to the surface. Lucas looked around, remembering the happy times he had spent there, while Peter and Sophia saw only the opportunity to increase their fortunes. The reading of the will promised to be an event filled with revelations and confrontations, and everyone knew that by the end of that day, their lives could change forever. Mr. Armstrong, adjusting his glasses and clearing his throat, began to read the will. The living room of the Thompson mansion was silent, except for the soft sound of rain hitting the windows. Lucas, Peter, and Sophia were seated on leather sofas, each with a different expression on their faces. Lucas appeared calm, yet alert Peter was impatient, tapping his fingers on the arm of the sofa and Sophia maintained a cold, calculating look. Good morning, everyone, mister. Armstrong began, his voice deep and solemn. We are gathered here to honor the last wishes of your mother, Beatrice Thompson. Before we begin, I would like to express my condolences for the loss of such an extraordinary woman. Lucas nodded in appreciation, while Peter and Sophia exchanged impatient glances. Let's get to the point Peter interrupted the silence. What did our mother leave for us? Mr. Armstrong shot a stern look at Peter before continuing. Beatrice was a very wise woman and anticipated that there might be conflicts over the division of her estate. Therefore, she established two challenges that you must complete to decide who will inherit her fortune. Challenges, Sophia exclaimed incredulously. This is ridiculous. We are her children. We should simply divide the inheritance. Peter agreed, shaking his head. Exactly. It makes no sense for us to go through challenges. This is an insult. Lucas, trying to stay calm, intervened. If these are our mother's wishes, we should respect them. She must have had a good reason for this. Mr. Armstrong continued, ignoring the interruptions. The challenges were designed to test the intelligence and honesty of each of you. Beatrice believed that only someone with these qualities should inherit her fortune. Peter snorted, crossing his arms. This is absurd. I'm her son. I shouldn't have to prove anything. Sophia, with a look of disdain, added, and how exactly are these challenges going to work? What do we have to do? Mr. Armstrong opened an envelope and took out a document, reading aloud. The first challenge will take place in dark rooms, where each of you must choose between three boxes. Two contain venomous animals, and one is empty. Whoever finds the empty box first, without being bitten, will win the challenge. Peter and Sophia exchanged worried glances, while Lucas remained thoughtful. And the second challenge asked Lucas, trying to understand the logic behind the tests. The second challenge will be a mirror maze, explained Mr. Armstrong. You must find the exit in the shortest possible time. These challenges are not only tests of courage, but also of intelligence and decision-making under pressure. Sophia rolled her eyes. This is a waste of time. But if it's what we need to do to get the inheritance, then let's just get it over with. Peter, still indignant, muttered, I hope this doesn't take long. I have more important things to do. Lucas, on the other hand, felt a surge of determination. He knew these challenges were more than mere tests. They were a final lesson from his mother, an opportunity to prove his worth and honor her legacy. I'm ready, he stated firmly. Let's begin. Mr. Armstrong nodded, pleased with Lucas's response. Very well. Let's prepare for the first challenge. May luck be with all of you. The tension in the room rose, and the siblings stood up, ready to face the challenges that would determine the future of Beatrice's estate. Each knew that by the end of these tests, their lives could change forever. The siblings were led by Mr. Armstrong and his assistants threw the dark corridors of the mansion to a seldom-used wing, where three dark rooms awaited. The atmosphere was oppressive, with the sound of rain intensifying the sense of isolation and tension. The walls, covered with ancient tapestries, seemed to absorb any sound, creating an almost deafening silence. 
Each of you will enter a different room, explained Mr. Armstrong, holding a flashlight that cast dancing shadows on the walls. I will review the instructions for this challenge. Inside each room, there are three boxes. Two contain venomous animals, and one is empty. You must find the empty box to win the challenge. Peter, still disgruntled, with a smirk of disdain, commented, This is ridiculous. As if choosing between boxes is a test of intelligence. Sophia, with a look of concern, added, And if we get bitten, this is too dangerous. Mr. Armstrong replied firmly, There are antidotes ready and a medical team on standby. But remember, this is a test of courage and intelligence, as your mother wished. Lucas, keeping calm, looked at his siblings and said, Let's just do what needs to be done. Our mother had her reasons. Each was led to a separate room. As Lucas entered, he felt the cold, damp air of the environment. The darkness was complete, and he could barely see his own hand in front of him. Feeling around in the dark, he found the three boxes. Think, Lucas, think he murmured to himself. He knew his mother would not do something so cruel without a reason. It was then that he had a flash of insight. Meanwhile, in the room next door, Peter was impatient. This is a waste of time, he grumbled, opening one of the boxes without thinking. A scream of pain echoed down the corridor when he was bitten by a scorpion. Damn, that hurts. Sophia, in the third room, was trembling with fear. I can't do this, she whispered, but the pressure to win the inheritance made her act. She opened a box and, in an instant, felt the bite of a snake. Help, I've been bitten. Lucas, hearing his siblings' screams, remained calm. He approached the room's door and, with a gentle push, realized it was unlocked. Of course, he thought. Mom wanted us to think beyond the obvious choices. He quickly opened the door and stepped out, finding Mr. Armstrong in the corridor. You did it, Lucas, Mr. Armstrong said with a smile of approval. You passed the first challenge. Peter and Sophia, injured, were quickly attended to by the lawyer's assistants. Peter, with a contorted face of pain, looked at Lucas angrily. How did you get out so quickly? Lucas calmly replied, The door was never locked. Mom wanted us to think beyond the boxes. Sophia, still in shock, murmured, This is insane. How did we not realize? Mr. Armstrong, observing the scene, said, this was just the first test. Your mother wanted you to learn to look beyond appearances and to use intelligence in high-pressure situations. Let's prepare for the next challenge. The siblings, still shaken, knew the next test would be even more challenging. The tension among them grew, and the mansion, with its secrets and memories, seemed to silently watch as the fate of Beatrice's state unfolded. The second challenge was announced by Mr. Armstrong with a solemn tone. He reiterated the instructions for the second challenge. Now you will face a mirror maze. The one who finds the exit in the shortest time will be the winner of this challenge. Peter and Sophia exchanged complicit looks as they headed to the entrance of the maze. We need to make sure Lucas doesn't win, Peter whispered with a malicious smile. Let's mark the correct path and alter some mirrors to confuse him. Sophia nodded determinedly. Leave it to me. We'll make it look like an accident. Lucas oblivious to the conspiracy, was focused on winning the challenge fairly. I'm ready, he said confidently. Peter was the first to enter the maze. He proceeded carefully, discreetly marking the correct path with small scratches on the mirrors. After a few minutes, he found the exit and emerged with a satisfied smile. Good luck, Sophia, he said, winking at his sister. Sophia entered next, following the marks left by Peter. Midway, she began to alter the position of some mirrors, creating false paths and dead ends. This should delay him enough, she murmured, completing the challenge in record time. Finally, it was Lucas's turn. He entered the maze with determination but soon realized something was wrong. These mirrors. Something isn't right, he thought aloud. He followed the marks but increasingly found himself on paths that led nowhere. Damn, this doesn't make sense. Meanwhile, outside, Peter and Sophia watched with satisfied smiles. He'll never make it out, said Peter, laughing. After several failed attempts, Lucas began to feel the weight of the cheating. 
This is impossible, he said, exasperated. Someone help me. I'm stuck. Mr. Armstrong, hearing Lucas's cries, activated the rescue team. Let's get him out of there, he said, looking concerned. When Lucas was finally rescued, he was visibly shaken. They cheated, he said, looking directly at Peter and Sophia. I know you did something. Peter, with a fake smile, replied, We don't know what you're talking about, Lucas. Maybe you're just not as good as you think. Sophia, feigning innocence, added, Yes, Lucas, maybe you should accept that you can't always win. Mr. Armstrong, observing the interaction, knew something was wrong but decided to wait for the right moment to act. Let's gather for the final announcement, he said, leading the siblings back to the meeting room. The younger siblings' cheating seemed to have worked, but the truth was yet to come. In the final meeting, the atmosphere was charged with tension. Peter and Sophia were eager to sign the documents that would make them the heirs to Beatrice's fortune. Lucas, on the other hand, was downtrodden but determined to uncover the truth. Mr. Armstrong began to organize the papers on the table. All right, we are ready for the signing of the documents he announced in a formal tone. Peter and Sophia, please step forward. Peter, with a triumphant smile, picked up the pen. Finally, all this fortune will be ours, he whispered to Sophia, who nodded with a gleam of satisfaction in her eyes. However, before Peter could sign, the door to the room burst open. A tall man with a commanding presence entered, his eyes blazing with determination. Stop immediately, he ordered, his voice echoing through the room. Everyone turned, surprised. Who are you? asked Mr. Armstrong, confused. My name is Michael, the man replied while walking up to the table. I was a close friend of Beatrice, and she entrusted me to ensure her inheritance was distributed fairly. Peter and Sophie exchanged nervous glances. What are you doing here? Peter asked, trying to maintain his composure. Michael ignored the question and placed a laptop on the table. I have evidence that Peter and Sophia cheated in the challenges he declared, opening the laptop and connecting it to a projector. That's ridiculous, exclaimed Sophia, trying to disguise her nervousness. You can't prove anything. Michael clicked on a video, and the images began to project on the wall. The video clearly showed Peter marking the mirrors in the maze and Sophia altering the positions of the mirrors to confuse Lucas. The voices of the siblings conspiring were audible and unmistakable. This is a setup, shouted Peter, desperate. It can't be real. Michael looked directly at Peter and Sophia. Beatrice knew you might try something dishonest. She asked me to monitor the challenges and ensure that the truth prevailed. She installed cameras in the places where we would conduct the tests when she passed away. Lucas, who had been watching in silence, finally spoke. I knew something was wrong. You never played fair. At that moment, Mr. Armstrong could not believe the cheating that Peter and Sophia had committed against their own brother. Sophia, with a trembling voice, tried to argue. But we also wanted to honor our mother, claim our share of the inheritance, and we know Lucas was the smartest. We wouldn't have a chance. Honor our mother, Lucas interrupted, his voice laden with emotion. You cheated and conspired against me. That's not honoring her memory. Mr. Armstrong nodded, agreeing with Lucas. Beatrice knew that true wealth isn't just in money but in integrity and character. She wanted the inheritance to go to someone who could continue her legacy in a fair and honest manner. Michael concluded, looking at everyone in the room, and that person is Lucas. He has proven to be worthy of Beatrice's trust and love. The inheritance will be his, as per his mother's wish. I will read the will to prove your mother's intent. The room fell silent as Peter and Sophia, speechless, finally understood the depth of their actions and their mother's true intentions. Mr. Armstrong, with a solemn air, held Beatrice's will in his hands. The room was silent, everyone anxiously awaiting the final words that would seal the fate of the inheritance. He began to read, his voice echoing through the room. I, Beatrice, declare that my fortune should be inherited by someone honest and pure-hearted, someone who can continue my legacy with integrity and justice. Peter and Sophia, sitting side by side, exchanged nervous glances. Lucas, with a racing heart, listened attentively, 
feeling his mother's presence in every word. Mr. Armstrong continued. If any of my children act dishonestly during the challenges, they will be disqualified and will not be entitled to the inheritance. Mr. Armstrong went on, therefore, due to cheating, Peter and Sophia are disqualified. The inheritance will be granted to Lucas, who has proven himself worthy of his mother's trust and love. Lucas, with tears in his eyes, slowly stood up. I, I don't know what to say. Mom always taught me to be fair and honest. I promise to honor her memory and use this inheritance for noble causes, helping those who need it most. Peter, with evident anger, shouted, This is unfair. We are her children, too. Sophia, with a choked voice, tried to argue, Lucas, please think of us. Lucas looked at his siblings, his expression firm yet filled with compassion. I am thinking of you, but I am also thinking of what is right. Mom wanted this inheritance to be used for good, and that is what I will do. Mr. Armstrong concluded, the decision has been made. Lucas is the sole heir to Beatrice's fortune. The room fell silent as the truth of Beatrice's words resonated in everyone's hearts. Lucas, now the legitimate heir, felt the weight of responsibility, but also the honor of continuing his mother's legacy with dignity and love. Now in possession of his mother's inheritance, Lucas dedicated himself to transforming the fortune into a legacy of positive impact. Lucas chose not to leave anything to his siblings, as they had shown no consideration and had resorted to cheating to try to defeat him. Therefore, Lucas invested in social projects that he always believed were essential for building a fairer society. Let's make a difference, just as Mom always wanted he would say to his collaborators. He founded schools in needy communities, providing quality education to children who previously had no access. Education is the key to a better future Lucas would affirm at each inauguration, with a hopeful smile on his face. Additionally, he established free health clinics offering essential medical care to those who could not afford it. No one should be deprived of basic medical care, he declared while cutting the ribbon at yet another clinic. Lucas also implemented community support programs, such as professional training centers and entrepreneurship initiatives. I want everyone to have the chance to thrive, he explained, encouraging both young and old to seek new opportunities. Years passed, and Lucas saw the fruits of his labor flourish. However, Peter and Sophia, who had squandered their own opportunities, were facing financial difficulties. One day, they decided to approach Lucas, hoping to get help. Lucas, we need to talk to you, said Peter with a hesitant tone, entering his brother's office. Sophia, with eyes full of regret, added, We are going through a tough time. Could you help us financially? Lucas, sitting behind his desk, looked at his siblings with compassion. I understand your situation, he began but giving you money won't solve the problems in the long run. Peter, frustrated, asked, Then what do you suggest? Lucas smiled gently. I want to offer you a chance to work at my companies. You can learn new skills and, at the same time, earn what you need honestly. Sophia, surprised, asked, Would you really do that for us? Yes, Lucas replied firmly. I want you to learn to value your own effort and to build something significant. Mom always believed in the power of honest work, and so do I. Peter and Sophia accepted the offer. Thank you, Lucas. We promise not to let you down, they said in unison. Lucas nodded, satisfied. Let's start a new journey together. There is still much to do, and I want us to do it as a family. And so Peter and Sophia began working at Lucas's companies, learning the importance of integrity and effort. The family, despite past differences, found a new balance united by Beatrice's legacy and Lucas's determination to do good. On their first day of work, Lucas greeted Peter and Sophia at the entrance of the company with a welcoming smile. Welcome. I'm glad you decided to take this step, he said, extending his hand. Peter, still somewhat skeptical, shook his brother's hand. Thank you, Lucas. We'll do our best. Sophia with a look of determination, added, Yes, we are ready to learn and change. Lucas led them through the office, introducing them to colleagues and explaining their roles. Peter, you will start in the logistics department. It's a job that requires organization and attention to detail. Sophia, you will be in the marketing sector, 
where your creativity will be very useful. The first few days were challenging. Peter, accustomed to having everything in life, struggled to adapt to the work pace. This is harder than I imagined, he confessed to Lucas during a coffee break. Lucas patiently replied, I know it's tough at the beginning, Peter, but remember, honest work brings a satisfaction that easy money can never provide. Sophia, on the other hand, found a new purpose in her work. I never thought I could enjoy creating campaigns and seeing the results so much she said excitedly during a team meeting. Over time, Peter and Sophia began to understand the value of integrity and effort. They became more humble and dedicated, earning the respect of their colleagues. You're doing very well, Peter praised a supervisor. Your organization has greatly improved our workflow. Sophia, in turn, received compliments for her innovative ideas. Your last campaign was a success, Sophia. Congratulations, said Lucas, proud. The family, despite past differences, found a new balance. At Sunday dinners, there were now laughs and sincere conversations. I'm proud of you, said Lucas, raising a toast. Mom would be happy to see how we've grown together. Peter and Sophia, with eyes shining with gratitude, responded in unison, Thank you, Lucas. You've shown us the true value of life. Lucas continued to inspire with his generosity and wisdom, and the siblings, now more humble, rebuilt their lives with dignity and mutual respect. Together they honored Beatrice's legacy, transforming the inheritance into a symbol of unity and growth.